get ready. This is the greatest story ever told in any book we have read. You hear me? This shiz is the most outlandish bullshit we have ever read. You hear me? Put your seatbelt on, though. Hello there, Bellas. If you have not already done so, please remember to like, share, subscribe, and visit uptopbeauty.com. And if you are not already a part of this book club and you want to take this vegan journey with us, please hit the Patreon link below and or the join button here on the YouTube and for a small monthly fee of $5, you babies, Yashu, can be privy to all the shenanigans before the YouTube gets it, if the YouTube gets it. Now, let's finish talking about Miss, not finish, but continue talking about Miss Betty LeVette, the Corinne Steffens of the 60s. Why you call her Corinne Steffens' name? Because she just be hunching the celebrities just so she can say she hunched them. That ain't good enough. The 70s became Stevie Wonder's breakthrough decade. He won a thousand Grammys and became the golden boy of pop music. His albums, like Songs in the Key of Life, were huge sellers. I'd known Stevie since he was 12. I had no reservation about asking him for help. Could I tour with him? Would he produce me? Did he have a song for me? I put in more than a couple of calls to him. I'm waiting to hear back. Mother Hunchy. In 1975, I turned on the radio and heard LaBelle doing Lady Marmalade. I nearly slit my wrists again. That song was made for me, except that it wasn't. It was given to Patty, who gave it the right spirit and sound. I wasn't surprised. It was the board number one hit. I was just aggravated that it wasn't my hit. Okay, so, um, that, see, one of you guys pointed out that she is an Aquarian. And like the other Aquarian books we've read, uh, Etta James and uh, Rickety James, Betty LeVette has a undertone of narcissism about her that knocks me out. I'm not no psychotherapist or no psychologist or no psychiatrist, okay? But she has a sense of... I'm the shiz, and all of you are wrong and dumb because you don't know that I'm the shiz. And it's kind of off-putting. Don't get me wrong. As a YouTuber, every day I struggle with, damn, when am I going to get my break? But fortunately, my people support me so well that I don't really have, uh, you know, that feeling because for a few consistent views that I do get, those people support me. I mean, in fact, thank you all so much. I haven't reached my GoFundMe goal yet, but I appreciate you all so much for contributing to me. And I would have to disagree with her. I do not think that that song was meant for her voice. I don't. I'm sorry. It's it's like her voice is like, like really bluesy. And a bluesy voice like that is not going to do well with Lady Marmalade. So, you know, if I'm wrong, you guys can check me, but I don't think that would have worked for her. Mine didn't come, which is why I turned my attention from music to men. The man who interested me most was a visiting gangster from New York who had been shot 20 times and survived. I wanted to survive. I wanted to be with big time survivors and if that guy happened to be going against my boyfriend at the time the richest drug dealer in detroit well i'd have to make a choice get ready this is the greatest story ever told in any book we have read you hear me this shiz 
It's the most outlandish bullshit we have ever read. You hear me? Put your seatbelt on, though. Here it go. Jack owned a dozen chicken restaurants in Harlem and dealt heroin on the side. He also had a nephew who was working out of Detroit, David, who was trying to move into the territory of the drug dealer I was seeing. I wasn't aware of the impeding danger. All I knew was that Jack and David liked me when they saw me singing at a local club. After my set, they came up to me at the bar. Jack started bragging on his nephew, talking about how no matter how many times his enemies tried, no one could take him out. Ooh, I know somebody like that. Ooh, they call him Mumba. Black Mumba. He only got one lung. It's crazy. It's crazy. Okay? Like, they cut him from ear to ear. Ooh, 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 ooh. Ooh, they tried to murk his ass, but he won't die. He won't die. He a burger. David started bragging on his uncle, talking about how many chicken restaurants and apartment buildings he owned in Harlem and how he managed Big Maybell and other artists like Kim Tolliver, a soul singer living in Cleveland. Now, don't forget, Big Maybell is the lady who was living on the street struggling with a heroin addiction. Remember when Betty LeVette was singing at a club and this haggled woman came through and Betty LeVette was like, who's this old haggled lady taking my spot? This is my club. Girl, that, that, that Betty LeVette is a piece of work, girl. I happened to mention my boyfriend at the time, the city's most prominent dealer. Was the city's most prominent dealer, said David. You need to think in terms of the future, Levette, said Jack, not the past. Far as the future goes, David said, that's happening in New York. Why don't you come back with us? We're flying first class into LaGuardia tomorrow night. Got a ticket with your name on it. Again, I'm going to reiterate, this is the best story ever told that we have ever read. I knew Jack was for real. He had a reputation, but his nephew was sketchy and flat out crazy. He had that far off gaze that made me wonder. The fact that he'd survived 20 attempts on his life certainly impressed me. H hold tight now. Marjorie Harvey. The fact that he liked me pleased me. And besides, I wasn't making any real money in Detroit. A trip to New York might do me good. Besides, Jack had music biz connections. We flew off to New York. When we landed, two limos were waiting. Jack went off in one direction and David and I went in another. In our limos, we started doing lines. David checked us into a fancy midtown hotel where the party continued for several weeks. He went out during the day and at night came back with fabulous jewelry for me. He took me to the best restaurants. He took me to the village to hear jazz. The high life kept getting higher until the night he didn't return. I didn't think much of it. It's no big deal for a man to stay out all night. After all, David wasn't exactly my husband. But one night turned into two and two turned into three. And on the fourth day, I discovered that my key didn't work in the door. The hotel manager was saying we had a $2,000 unpaid bill. We? Yes, Bill. We? He gooped you, girl. Yes, you and your man. It's his room, not mine. Don't matter to me whose room it is. No one is getting in there without paying me $2,000. All my stuff in there. All your stuff is now my stuff until I get $2,000. I don't have $2,000. That ring and necklace you're wearing look like they can bring $2,000. I got to give you my jewelry to get in my room? You do if you want your stuff back. Can you give me a minute? I'll give you two. I had some numbers for David, but no one was answering. I finally reached 
Jack and told him the situation. My nephew is a fuck up, he said. He's disappeared. No one knows where he is, not even me. He's left me in a lurch, I said. Look, honey, get out of the hotel situation as best as you can. I'll give you an address of one of my buildings up in Harlem. Go to the penthouse apartment. Got a beautiful view. You'll love it. You can stay there. I traded my jewelry for my clothes. Without enough money for a cab, hopped the A train. The quickest way to get to Harlem. When I got to the apartment and knocked on the door, a man answered. He was wearing a woman's slip. Come in, sugar, he said. Are you here for V? No, no. I'm here because Jack gave me this address. He wants you to stay here? I think so. V gonna like you, baby. Come on in. I looked around the apartment and saw a dozen gay guys from the ages of 17 to 30. They were watching TV, trying on clothes, reading books, snapping on the couch. They looked me over from head to toe. V, one of them cried, Jack done sent you a fresh one. The bedroom door opened and out came V, not a gay woman, but a genuine government inspected prime cut bulldagger. She said, bull Okay, down. pause. Now, you don't need my story to make this part interesting, but hold on. Man, it used to be this girl back home. When I tell you, she was, she was, girl, oh my God. See, me, I like my women to be a good balance between female and tomboy. When I see you, and the only thing I see is aggression and that it's a possible chance that you might stab somebody in their neck or you've been in jail a couple of times. I'm not attracted to that. I'm sorry. I, I need, I, oh, I can't do it. I, can, I, need a, I need my women to be just as scared of jail as I am. Okay, they may have some shenanigans, but no, they ain't doing too much. I ain't looking forward to a female that can do time easily. Let me say that. All right, and the way Betty LeBette described this lady, if the if the judge said to her, all right, five years, she like, the bedroom door opened and out came B, not a gay woman, but a genuine government inspected prime cut bull dyke, arms like Popeye, cuts all over her face, a mouth of messed up teeth. Don't you worry about these sissies, said B. They just mad they ain't cute as you. Come on in, sugar. You're safe in here. Mm-mm. Uh-uh. Uh-uh, uh-uh. Uh-uh, not me. Oh, my God. The way I would turn around and be like, I left something in the car. I'll be back. I wondered. I worried. I still had my occasional nights with Cindy, but Cindy was cute and feminine and not threatening in the least. V was a monster. I didn't want a monster making love to me. That's what she, yeah. That's, yeah. Here's the yeah. deal, honey, said V. I ain't doing nothing you don't want done. The thing is, I just need a place to sleep. You got your side of the bed, I got mine. And if there's any action, it's going to have to start with you. Yeah. Thank you, I said. Because bull daggers take pussy too. Okay, I'll move forward. The real action, said V, is out there in the living room. You should see what happens when Jack comes by. It turned out that Jack was a voyeur. He showed up every night, a coke crust of white around his nose. He got the boys good and high and then got them to put on a show for him. It was a sex circus. They do three ways, four ways, this way and that way. They were practically acrobats. I've never seen so many positions for sucking and fucking. No orifice went untouched. Jack never got in the middle of the ring. As one of the boys, you know, him off, Jack simply watched until he passed out. After a few days, one of the gay guys just wanted to watch 
me. I was soon teaching him all my songs. Soon there were two Betty Levettes living in Jack's apartment. During the day, the boys would go out and steal. They'd bring back mink coats and gowns, cosmetics, and jewelry. V was the house mom. If any of them didn't bring back enough merchandise, V, the ferocious but friendly dyke, would slap them upside the head and bring them back in line. I said, God damn. But, you know, it happened. I stayed for a few weeks. I have to admit that it was entertaining. But the gangsters who kept showing up with Jack were dangerous. The scene was fueled by endless amounts of cocaine. I felt like something was about to pop. And when it did, I wanted to be gone. So what did I do? The usual called Jim Lewis. Jim, I said, I fucked up again. Ain't surprised. I need to get out of here and don't have the money for a ticket. When are you going to learn that you're a star? If you want people to treat you as one, you have to act like one. I don't need a lecture, just a plane ticket. I'll get you the ticket and work. I haven't sung in months. I got something that might keep you for a while. Something permanent. Oh, <laughs>